I'm here at ITP to check out wearable technology, or wearables. This is Adam Harvey. Hi. Hi. And um, you're doing a project on something that has to do with paparazzi. I have a background, kind of a dark side in photography, doing events and shooting parties. Being a photographer, I wanted to kind of continue that game, but give the subject a way to talk back. So last semester I started a project here called Anti-Paparazzi Fashion. What I did is make a device that enables someone to flash back, so when you take a photo of me, this device will flash back. It'll overexpose your photo and then you can't use me. So it's like mace for a camera. Yeah. Inside you have lithium polymer batteries delivering a high amperage to these um, super bright LEDs. And you hold it up and point it back at them, Ooh, aim it in the direction so of the camera. Right. That works really well. You cannot see the person. I think that we should be free definitely to make a fool of ourselves when we want to and not have to worry about a photo being released on the internet. That's out of our control. So I'm here with Anaid Gomez. Correct. And um, <laughs> tell me a little bit about your project. What is it exactly? Okay, uh, my project's called Kokoro. It started out as an exercise to find better ways to get our music. I'm a snowboarder and coming down the mountain you always get like the very slow songs and then when you're sitting at the lift you get the best active song that you really want to come down the mountain. So I just wanted something that related my heart rate with my music. So basically, um, depending on your heart rate, does that uh, play from your iPod, does it play faster and slower songs? Exactly. Cool. So what um, technology did you use to develop this and how did you do it? I'm using a polar belt which wirelessly transmits to this piece of hardware and inside is a polar sensor that receives the information and then an at mega chip running Arduino software tells the iPod what song to play depending on how it felt my heart racing or not so much. So why is it so big? It's uh, still a prototype, mm -hmm. so even just like that, it's the size of the microchip basically. Um, I'm wearing this other model mm -hmm. that's a little bit more body oriented kind of thing. It's got the iPod compartment in here and also the actual device. Oh, so it holds everything. It holds everything. What do you envision for the future? Like, what exactly do you want to do with this? Where do you see it? I think it can get to be very jewel-like. It can be something that you're wearing anywhere on your body. That was for me the learning experience. How how much we can put it around the body and make sure that that our digital devices that spend so much time next to our bodies and don't know anything about our bodies start to react to them. While people like Steve Mann have become infamous for embedding the latest technology into themselves, today there is a significant number of people experimenting with the intersections of biosensory and environmental inputs, artificial intelligence, and fashion design. As technology continues to race towards smaller, faster, cheaper, wearable computing becomes more and more prevalent. In programs like this at NYU, artists and designers interested in wearables tend to utilize circuits with sensors and microprocessors as their threads to interface our lives with our surroundings in new and meaningful ways.